Hello, my name is Stephanie Kreuss and I am currently a PharmD student at Drake University. The topic that I'm going to be discussing today is the use of dexmedetomidine and alcohol withdrawal. Dexmedetomidine, which is generic for Presidex, is classified as a selective alpha-2 adrenergic agonist and it has anesthetic and sedative properties. Um, these properties are thought to be due to the activation of G proteins by the alpha-2A adrenoreceptors in the brainstem, which then results in the inhibition of norepinephrine release. Some of the pharmacokinetic properties of dexmedetomidine are listed here. The onset of action for this medication is fairly quick at about 5 to 10 minutes. Um, patients should see the peak effect of this drug at 15 to 30 minutes. And the effects of the medication will last from 60 to 240 minutes after the infusion, just depending on what the dose used was. And finally, the elimination half-life of dexmedetomidine is relatively short at 120 to 160 minutes. There are just a few FDA-approved indications for dexmedetomidine. These include procedural sedation for non-intubated patients, and sedation for intubated or mechanically ventilated ICU patients for less than 24 hours. There is a new indication that was actually just added to Lexifomp yesterday at the time that I'm recording this presentation, and that's agitation associated with schizophrenia or bipolar 1 or 2 disorder. Uh, this indication was added after the FDA approved a new dosage form of dexmedetomidine in a sublingual form uh, just recently in April of 2022. Some off-label indications include general anesthesia, post-operative, delirium, non-cardiac surgery in elderly patients' prophylaxis, and sedation for intubated, mechanically ventilated ICU patients for greater than 24 hours. Um, some of the other, other indications that aren't, into, aren't listed here are shivering uh, for anesthetics, adverse reaction, fentanyl or sufentanyl-induced cough, postoperative pain, pre-medication for anesthetic procedure, or sedation during awake craniotomy. The most common adverse reactions for dexmedetomidine include bradycardia, hypertension, hypotension, tachycardia, respiratory depression, agitation, constipation, and nausea. There are some other adverse reactions that held a frequency of at least 5%. These included AFib, peripheral edema, hyper or hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, anxiety, respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and fever. Uh, this drug also holds a warning for withdrawal, withdrawal syndrome, which occurs in the reported 30% of patients and is typically associated with prolonged use of greater than 24 hours. Symptoms of withdrawal syndrome include hypertension, tachycardia, fever, and delirium. And because of this, it is best to limit the use of dexmedetomidine to less than 24 hours. I'm going to shift to talking about alcohol withdrawal syndrome and its associated symptoms. There is a progression of signs and symptoms following the reduction or cessation of alcohol intake after heavy and prolonged use, starting at stage one, which usually occurs six to 12 hours after stopping the alcohol. Um, these minor withdrawal symptoms include tremors, insomnia, irritability, mild agitation, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, tension, anxiety, sweating, and restlessness. About 12 to 24 hours after stopping, stage 2 occurs, and this is alcohol withdrawal-related hallucinations. Stage 3 occurs about 24 to 48 hours after stopping, and the, uh, this includes withdrawal seizures. And then finally, stage four typically occurs three to seven days after stopping. Um, and that is alcohol withdrawal delirium. Symptoms include hallucinations, disorientation, tachycardia, hypertension, agitation, diaphoresis, and low-grade fever. To the right is an illustration of what happens to a person's nerve cells when they chronically use alcohol. Uh, with no alcohol consum consumption, inhibitory GABA and excitatory glutamate are in homeostasis. And then when chronic consumption of alcohol occurs, causes a downregulation of GABA in order to maintain homeostasis with glutamate. So then when a person stops consuming alcohol and goes into a withdrawal state, the downregulated GABA receptors are so insensitive to GABA that the typical amount of GABA produced has little effect. 
and the upregulated glutamate takes over and causes the excitatory symptoms seen in alcohol withdrawal syndrome. And this takes us into our treatment of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So first-line therapy for most patients is benzodiazepines, which bind to the GABA-A receptors and help to balance out the effects of glutamate, resulting in a reduction of alcohol withdrawal symptoms, seizures, and recurrent seizures. Um, Anti-seizure medications may be considered to treat seizures in patients with mild to moderate withdrawal. And then there are some adjunctive medications that can be considered. Uh, beta blockers can help with the tachycardia and hypertension. Antipsychotics can help with delirium hallucinations. Phenobarbital can help with delirium. And then the alpha-2 adrenergic agonists, such as clonidine or dexmedetomidine, can help with tremors, tachycardia, and hypertension. Occasionally, there are patients that are resistant to benzodiazepines, and they can have resistant alcohol withdrawal. This is defined as not achieving sedation with diazepam greater than 200 milligrams or lorazepam 40 milligrams during the first three to four hours of treatment. Um, as we've seen, dexmedetomidine inhibits the release of norepinephrine and has a different mechanism than benzodiazepines. And so the inhibition of norepinephrine release helps to cause sedation and reduce some of the symptoms such as tremors, tachycardia, and hypertension when these are not controlled by uh, benzodiazepines, making it a really good adjunct of therapy for patients with resistant alcohol withdrawal. It's important to note that dexmedetomidine does not prevent seizures or delirium and should not be used as monotherapy. And then it should be given only when um, there is close monitoring for bradycardia and hypotension available. Here are the references that I used for this presentation, and I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you.